So salute. Hey, Sheppy. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. How you doing, man? You know, I gotta start the yeah. regular cordialities. Yeah, no, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm good, man. I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you? I'm excellent. You know, I'm in. I don't understand. I do understand. But you know, I don't. I actually don't get sick. You know, I have a very high metabolism, so I think I, everything gets burnt out. So I don't know. You know, COVID, no COVID, somebody else coming. I have no idea. I was just let, the fact that yeah, I, just, yeah. I have to ask you that. What's what's happening with COVID down here? I keep on hearing there's a second strain. I'm trying to get back by the end of March. You know, I don't know if yeah. you know, whatever that whole yeah. kind of thing. Who knows? You know. But so what's happening down there? Yeah. I know the cities is one reality. You know, rule is another reality. What's 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 going on? What can you tell me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It um, we we still, although the restrictions have been kind of slightly adjusted, but we're still uh, we we've, we've apparently we've gone through the second phase uh, and now kind of face a third uh, wave. You know, the, the second wave was uh, we managed it relatively well, yeah, and now we we we're kind of confronting the third wave. Uh, at the time that the vaccine, apparently they say if the vaccine uh, arrives in time and uh, the sufficient numbers are vaccinated by <laughs> September, uh, then then we would have, would stem the the, the time. But where so are they getting? That's, that's where we are. Yeah, but where are we getting these vaccines? Well, here's here's my here's my my my, my problem. Not my problem. Uh, what yeah. what I, my understanding? Uh, even here in the United States, yeah. we have they they have this problem because there's two two companies, Pfizer and Moderna. You know, they waited till they can get these people yeah. online because you know they're American companies or whatever. They they get paid off by Americans, I guess. But there's supposed to be other cures in the world, including I guess some traditional stuff that you'd have down there in Southern Africa. Yeah. Uh, but here's the thing. Yeah. With these kind of things, uh, the, for instance, they having a problem. Say, for instance, uh, vaccinating the the homeless. Because uh, what happens, you have to keep these things cold at a certain temperature before you administer yeah. them. So yeah. how can you, and then how do you do the follow-up, all the rest of that stuff? So I'm just trying to figure out um, the people who do want to get vaccinated, say, in Southern Africa, what, what are they going to do? Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Are, are they yeah, going to have the yeah. technology to keep the stuff? They're going to run around with refrigerated trucks or vans? To, to, to I don't know. I, how do you do, how do you keep track of people? Uh, you know, the, do you, have you heard anything about this, yeah. these kind of things? Yeah, 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 yeah. We 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 know very little in terms of the plan, except that uh, the, the, what what the Minister of Health has uh, communicated publicly that there there is a readiness to uh, uh, to to roll out the the, the uh, vaccination. But other than that, I mean, these are the key questions that you are raising. You know, how, uh, or, uh, in practical terms, uh, will this take place? Uh, how will logistically uh, the, the vaccines be delivered? What was uh, at the time that the vaccines had arrived from uh, India? There was a huge batch, I think, that arrived from India. They, they uh, discovered uh, a day or two after the the. the that, that, that landed that they uh, they expire in April at the end of April. So uh, and then there was concern because apparently the lifespan of the vaccine is six months from date of manufacture. So mm. uh, then there's a there was a bit of concern about this because uh, and also it's a it's a kind of vaccine that uh, I think you need the the two. Uh, what you call it now, the two jabs. The, the, uh, the booster uh, shot. To, in order for you to become on the clear, yeah. yeah. So now now there was a lot of concern about that. So there has been uh, some uh, public uh, communication by the Department of Health to say, look, it's not a loss, and there will be, because there was a rumor that they would be returned to the, uh, from where they came, but then now that, no, it's not a loss, it, it will be used to prioritize categories of people. Also, that particular vaccine, they were saying that because it had not been tested uh, uh, thoroughly, so it had some kind of uh, 60%, was it 60% efficacy. So, whereas the, the one, uh, they call it Johnson & Johnson, it had a more a higher degree of efficacy. Hmm. So, that's the one that, that now uh, it, it has been kind of... Uh, 
uh, is available and was uh, and now the president and the minister of health at, uh, were vaccinated publicly on television. Oh, so, so that's what we know. Mm -hmm. uh, beyond that, we, we know very little about what exactly will happen. There, there was also a concern at the time that these, this patch arrived from India about security because, you know, South Africa is like the, 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 the criminals, man. You know, they're thinking of uh, the next uh, innovative plan, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, so there was a plan that they need to be well secured. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they could land up. Uh, they could be stolen. Yeah. Uh, two more questions in this vein. I had this observation a little bit ago, not a whole lot long ago, because they kept on saying, well, well, Africa does, or, or parts of Africa does have it, some does have it, then the hot spots are like South Africa and, uh, say, Nigeria, mainly the countries that get a lot of airports, you know, for people coming through from, yeah. from other continents. But I was thinking something, especially in Southern Africa, now you know, you know, okay, yeah, it's one thing for tourists to come in through uh, through airlines or business people to come through airlines, but, you know, a lot of folks, they just, go, they, they, you know, talking about people in the region, they just walk over the border and then you end up, you know, yeah, yeah. You're, you're Congolese coming, everybody comes into Southern Africa, it's like, it's like being in Florida here, everybody goes down to Florida, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my, my, yeah. my, my question is, is that a concern? Uh, you know, not, not, you know, was that a concern? It's not, uh, been much said about it. Uh, I think partly because uh, the, 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 there has been some talks at a, at a continental kind of uh, political level. I mean, with the AU, the, I know the, the, the president was saying that they're sharing as much as possible, you know, <clears throat> a lot of the logistics and information. And also, it seems because there has been a push from some, you know, people, uh, co commentators and analysts to say, look, I mean, we have to, uh, whatever approach you take, we have to take the, the continent with us. You know, we can't see ourselves, you know, uh, isolated from the rest of the continent. So from that point of view, there has not been really that much of a reaction of, mm -hmm. you know, what will happen uh, when people cross over to, uh, uh, say, from Zim, for instance, uh, which is a lot of fluidity and a lot of movement mm. uh, to get to get vaccinated, and also on the other side, Zim. I think it started already with its program of vaccination. It got received some vaccines from China recently, a huge bag. So, mm. so we yeah. So we don't quite. I mean, there's not been um, a lot that's kind of been said along those lines. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's, that's, really, that's yeah. interesting because again, Southern Africa is very interesting because, in other words, you you just indicated that you're getting uh, vaccines that come from companies from uh, India, of course, the states. Now you're saying you're getting uh, vaccines that come from from China. You know, these are different companies, I yeah. suppose. Um, uh, uh, let me let me just, let me just end it. It's that's that's an observation because you know, hey, yeah. African guinea pigs, hey, welcome to the club, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, yeah. if it no, can no, work, definitely. if it can work here, it can work anywhere. We just yes, anyway. Let yeah, me, yeah. I have one more yeah. question. I have my one more question in that vein uh, because I saw some sort of clip someplace uh, that Julius Malema, who's head of the uh, Economic Freedom Fighters, uh, said yes, all Africans, you know, need to be vaccinated. What's the political thing? What well, any yeah. anybody go, any politics are going against that? What, what what's the what's the atmosphere with that? With, with the idea that. Uh, uh, they, they, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't catch the, the last one uh, of Judas Malema. Yeah, I was just saying there was a clip on Judas Malema uh, uh, um, advocating that all Africans should be vaccinated. And now there's, there, I know there's a ground movement where they say, no, we ain't going to yeah. be vaccinated. We don't want to be vaccinated. So now yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I'm yeah. only mentioning Judas Malema because, you know, he's he's like the poster child for whatever, whatever he's poster child. Nobody's yeah, talking yeah. about Sarah Ramaphosa or nothing like that when they talk, talk about internationally. They listen to this kind of thing. Yeah. So I'm just trying to figure out, yeah. are there other people, uh, prominent people that are saying, yes, we need to be vaccinated? And are there any voices that say, no, we don't need to be vaccinated, wait, or whatever the deal is? Do you know anything about that? There, there is. There is a lot of uh, suspicion around vaccines. I mean, uh, there certainly is. And uh, there has not been, uh, I think, they, they, uh, there, has, there are attempts, like, for instance, with the president uh, taking a vaccine publicly, and the Minister of Health has been 
to try and uh, allay those fears, but but there is, I mean, that that will not go away. You know, there are people that have said that no, they will not uh, vaccinate. Uh, out, you know, they've said it upright. Mm. Uh, so it's yeah, there is there is quite a lot of. Uh, um, uh, it's difficult to say the strength of that on the ground, but the, you know, there, there there has been quite a lot of uh, suspicion. Mm. Uh, because as you you know as you know when I'm there I live in a village and it just seems to me that's what's happening is the villages especially the rural areas they they they're not going to be really reached I don't want to say it like that you know but the point is yeah. mainly it's going to be the cities but then the rural people are going like ah we're distance or whatever we we don't care <laughs> I'm just yeah. you know saying oh man yeah 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 sure 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 yeah but, no, uh, no no certainly certainly Okay, one, one, uh, not one more thing, but the thing about also you mentioned uh, the African Union. Um, do you think that this whole situation, because things that the world is yeah. rapidly changing, is actually bringing uh, the African Union or African nations or African regions together? I mean, what, what's the impact? Uh, uh, do you see any changing in the landscape there? Uh, I think it, it has. Uh, uh, great potential too and and i think there has been attempts to at least at, a, at an official political level to do that to kind of i mean there have been a series of meetings there was the one recent was a virtual uh, meeting of the au to try and uh, and come to terms with uh, with a a continental approach uh, to, to 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 the vaccine to managing covid 19 and the mm. vaccine well uh, so there is, uh, yeah, there is. I think there is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so um, um, part of this whole um, dance <laughs> that the world is doing is that yeah. the, the, the world wants to go back to a normalcy, but they want to go back to this normalcy that that's uh, basically, I don't want to say capitalist normalcy, but a business kind of normalcy and not making any adjustments yeah. to what's really happening. Do you do you see yeah. that? I mean, the, uh, am I right? You know that that's one part of it. But let me do that part. Then I have another yeah. question. Yeah. No, I'm just saying. Well, well. So, it, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Just again. Uh, 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 I'm I'm just saying that people talk. Uh, one of these to rush out the vaccine, whatever. People want to get. Uh, they claim they want to get back to some kind of normalcy or the way it was or whatever have you. Of course, yeah. that's not going to happen. Yeah. So I was, I was yeah. one, I was wondering, um, wh who is pushing for what's happening next? Well, what, what section, what, what segment do you think is going to be more powerful? Because you, you, again, you got the criminals doing one thing, you got the officials doing another thing. You got, you, you see what I'm saying? You got the farmers, you, you got the companies yeah. that trying to make money doing something else. Who knows what kind of corruption, yeah. you know, kind of, you know, the quality is going to be thing. I was just wondering. Yeah. This normalcy of people wanting to go back to some normalcy, they not knowing the normalcy that people want is that normalcy that they know versus what yeah. may happen. You, you see, nobody's projected what may happen. Yeah. And yeah. No, no. There, there certainly there is a, that push for or to, to to get back to normal, and it's uh, it's uh, at a political level. I mean, uh, it, it's certainly spearheaded amongst others by the DA because the the the, uh, the DA tends to represent the interest of uh, of the moneyed class, uh, the old money, you know, because they, whereas the ANC maybe represents the new money, you know, in many ways. So so the the the, the DA has even been calling uh, for uh, for it to be allowed things. so that then what it will do, I think, no, it will, it will it, get them for the Western Cape, for instance. And, uh, and and get going and open the industries and so on. I mean, they've been the ones that oppose the, the ban on uh, beaches, for instance, uh, uh, which was linked to trying to deal with the, the, the second wave. Uh, uh, I, I, I missed that. I missed, I missed that. There. I missed that thing. You said a ban on something? Oh. Yes, on, uh, on on going to uh, to the beach. On oh, the beach, because, okay. Uh, during, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, during the, uh, the the kind of the uh, um, festive season, there's a lot mm -hmm. of uh, movement of people to go and relax, you know, at the beachfront. Mm -hmm. And so there was a ban on that, which didn't quite make sense because it says that, you know, in an open air, <laughs> exactly. as long as people are 
got a mask and open air situation. So, but in any case, the government says that it takes its cue and advice from from the uh, scientists, and then it, it in its wisdom uh, thought it uh, wise to ban people from uh, assembly. I think it was more a question of crowd control because they felt that they might not be able to handle huge crowds. They didn't have the capacity. So, so then they banned, you know, uh, people. So there was a lot of opposition, especially in the, in the, I mean, from the DA uh, and and businesses, you know, to say, look, I mean, tourists. Uh, uh, yeah, this, this was a kind of it's a it's a, it's a lucrative uh, industry for tourism, and and yeah, now they had to make do without any possibilities around that, and they were going to lose money and all of that. Yeah, so they. There has been the, that push for normalcy has come strongly at a political level from the uh, the old man, the, the parties that represent old money, and also uh, I think generally um, the, uh, the business, you know, business has been in the forefront of that. Yeah. And, and, and of course, with the DA yeah. meaning the Democratic Alliance is only one a political yeah. party, but they right. but but they like you said they they're sort of like the face of of uh, I would say but Afrikaans you know or a face of economic uh, people who have economic clout. Let's put it that way, and they're not going to give yeah, yeah. that up. Yeah. yeah, we have economic clout, and we have accumulated it historically. So mm-hmm. it's not it's not so much your black business that uh, would be part of that. You know, it, it's more like. The, the, the old money, so to speak, the new money uh, guys, you know, the novorish, they are like uh, they would, their interests tend to they tend to be expressed in the ANC, the mm. progressive business forum and whatever, you know, yeah. Mm. Oh. So so yeah. Yeah, no, so no, no. Yeah. Go go ahead, go ahead. I'm listening. No, no, that's what I was saying. Yeah, so that's that's what's really been happening. Yeah, around around or. Oh, uh, 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 some kind of uh, uh, opposition to the idea of a delayed, uh, even the vaccine, that we need vaccines now, uh, tomorrow, so that we can go back to normal. Yeah. Mm. However, I think the, the, on the other side of the spectrum, politically for me, is um, the kind of those who are left of, uh, of center. They have not been able to, to uh, deal with the fact that uh, this is a great historic opportunity to redefine uh, the way we do things, you know, to to uh, to to perhaps look at how you, you kind of uh, re-imagine uh, uh, our society uh, at different. Mm. I mean, including education. Education provision is now going to. I mean, this uh, virtual provision will. With us and, and and it's like how to strengthen that, how to also you know use this opportunity to address all these glaring inequalities which were brought in front of us at the education institutions. I mean, for the first time, lecturers now can they, they are faced uh, um, with the, the the dire living conditions of some of their students, which they would not have understood before because. The, the fact that the students were there on campus uh, was some form of, of uh, a, a false notion of equalization because, you know, all of them were in front of you and they're all, you know, sitting in front of you and as far as you're concerned, you measure them by the same rod. Whereas uh, with the, with COVID-19 now, students at home and you are on 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 an on a, on online platform, virtual platform, and suddenly some of your students disappear because the the network is dodgy where they are based or they just don't have the the data you know they've run out of data uh, whereas some of your students who can afford you, you know they're able to continue you know with with the class so there's been those glaring inequalities now again you know to use this opportunity to address those to address the the the, the gaps i mean for me what's puzzling is our country it's uh, so many years down the line. Why is is a network coverage across the country not complete? Why do you have these pockets of, and I've not, not been convinced, I know there's a technical argument, but it can be overcome. You know, you can do relays 
and whatever you know you can you can practically cover the country mm -hmm. and you can use satellite and use all sorts of uh, available uh, uh, infrastructure so it's those questions that need to be addressed uh, i i have asked with the department of of uh, uh, in fact it was first the department of uh, communication but then they referred me to the province to ask them do you have a a re status report on the coverage you know just the the the, the, the network coverage of the country uh, so that we know where the problem areas are we know why uh, there are problem areas or or deeps you know and and that sort of thing mm. i mean it's really Pathetic one network, for instance, telecom is been really bad. Of all the other networks, the, the, the these uh, cell phone companies, uh, of all of them, uh, telecom has been the the, the, the last. In fact, it, it, it even didn't uh, uh, get on board. It was kicking and screaming to get on board with this provision of of thirty. Um, 30 uh, gigs of, of data per month for students. Mm. Mm. And that 30 gig, the way it is divided, it's 10 gigs during the day. And the 20 gigs uh, is only nighttime surfing, you know, from midnight until until 5 o'clock. Mm. And, and that's the time that students are sleeping, you know, if mm. they're at home, they certainly are sleeping. If they were on campus, I think they could use that because you, you could get up, you know, and do your work during midnight. But at home, you stay in some village and and your parents are sleeping and, you know, nobody wants, in fact, to wake up and put on a light during the night uh, could be dangerous because it, it could attract whatever elements that are roaming around at night, mm. you know, when they see a house with a light. To... Uh, so it's all those things that... Uh, yeah, we, we, we kind of haven't grappled with. And, and, and the last one is like just a typical a student of mine who's come from some village in the trans sky, gets the, and, and I treat her as a low, as kind of a slowest soldier. So I pace myself with her. If, if she gets the class, and if, if she's attended to in terms of her needs and she's able to turn things around, then all the other students would. Uh, but now what happened is that she gets a laptop, the university provides a laptop, it sends to all students in similar circumstances, it sends a laptop, but those who are in urban areas, it gets delivered to the door by the courier service, but with her, it gets delivered to the nearest town, she's got to take a taxi from a village to go and fetch it in town, so she incurs costs. Mm -hmm. The second thing is she... Um, one time I'm I'm busy with her, you know, like because now she she's been left behind because I went on with the others, and now I'm spending time to you know for catch up with her and and the other students in similar circumstances. And suddenly we get cut off whilst I'm talking to her. Um, I had a nice connection with her for a while, with about fifteen minutes. Then we get cut off, and I call her. Uh, the the network is dodgy, but you know that time I'm able to uh, connect. And she says, no, it's not, I, I'm asking her hey, what happened, you know, she said, no, it's a battery died, a laptop battery. So I said, okay, look, but uh, can you not find a place to charge or, or to, to connect it? And first of all, she doesn't have electricity at home. And then in the village, there is no place with electricity. I think the nearest is in town. And in town, She's got to take a taxi to get there. She said she can go to town to charge it, but it will take a taxi and then it takes some time to charge. She pays very little for charging. Mm. 10 rands. But uh, a taxi is 60 rands one way and the 60 rands another way, so 120 rands. Mm. So one thirty she's got to spend just to get her laptop charged. And then I'm saying those people that were planning the decision, they were taking the decision to send the laptops had they asked themselves this question, because it, had, I mean, had they asked the, themselves, they would have at least tried to mitigate, you know, these circumstances. Mm -hmm. Maybe by sending her a a, a a power bank or something, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which which a colleague of mine and uh, another professor who's retired, uh, uh, bro uh, once when I told him the story, he, he, he bought her 
a, a power bank and we've got, we got a courier to her. Mm. So it's, um, th- these are the challenges that we kind of face that we can address, that the, this uh, pandemic has really, really kind of brought it to our, in, in front of our faces. And, uh, and for me, I think we're taking very little advantage of that to, to kind of address, uh, address this, including, look, you know, kind of having uh, Wi-Fi provision, like the, the, the network that we were talking about, I think now, more than ever, you know, it's, it's the, the LIFO, you know, we are talking about. My, like the LIFI, the LIFI where, where instead of a radio wave, instead of radio wave is light waves. Uh, yeah, it's a technology yeah. that, you know. But see, again, let's go yeah. back because, I, again, I look at it as an opportunity uh, to bring Southern Africa together. In other words, all the static nations should be uh, employing Li Fi for everybody. Therefore, you got you. They don't have to worry about that. It's not a gov. It's not South Africa or Mozambique or, or Congo or, or, or Madagascar. It's like they all together will, will implement put the yeah. resources in, and implement Li Fi, and this helps everybody. Plus, you know, okay. Yeah. So the, you know, you know my idea about, about about that. So this embrace the wrong technology because the wrong people are not the wrong people. The people that are advising them. Or the people that they know, <laughs> you know yeah. they're not going to yeah, talk yeah. to me about this stuff. They're not going to talk to other people about this stuff because they don't know us, you know. So, so in other words, yeah, yeah. yeah you're in more important. You're in a more important position because at least again, you talk to this professor and they got this other situation. See, there's there's ways that this, this stuff can happen, but you have to get to the right people. It's who you know, not not not, the, yeah, not what's, yeah. what's what's going on, you know. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, l- uh, listen. So I mean, uh, we spent all the time on COVID and stuff like that. Uh, I want to talk about other things, but maybe another time. Let me, maybe I, I just need to do it just on a regular basis. Maybe I need to call you um, weekly or so. I don't know. Let, let let me think about it. <laughs> Any anything you want to bring up? Anything you want to bring up to me? What tell me what's happening? What what am I coming back down to in a couple of months when I get there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and it, yeah. Okay. So anything that that I I need uh, this side, yeah, you say. No, I'm just I'm just saying that I'll be I don't know what I'm carrying back. I'm just I'm just asking you, um, yeah, uh, well, 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 yeah. what should I expect coming back? That that's so different, you know. What I mean, uh, are people going to oh, say? Okay, 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 sure, yeah, man. Hey, there is a, a yes, like man, but now um, I, I I I'm I'm not because there's a, there's very little. What what we doing? We we um, we we getting. Kind of, we're relying on radio and television for to inform us about what's going on across the country. I think these briefings that the the, the government at the national level provides occasionally, every every second, third week, you know, we get a briefing and the president speaks uh, to the nation. So they, they are very useful to kind of keep us uh, uh, up to speed, mm-hmm. uh, but. Uh, other than that, it's uh, at institutional level. There's a lot of interesting, uh, interesting things. As a friend of mine, we used to work there at Forte uh, in the in the hostel, uh, not a hostel. In the he was the what is the dean dean of students? I okay. think yeah. Mm-hmm. His, his name is Malinge. a uh, short chap, okay. not too short, but big, big uh, chap. Mm-hmm. He he. Uh, Basically, he left the, the, the job. I mean, it's the, the fall off uh, between him and the PC, and uh, it was really distressing. I mean, uh, he's no longer there. He's, he's uh, looking for work elsewhere. But it was he's a very formidable because he comes with experience as a student activist in the past. You know, he was our generation of activists, mm. and he is quite sharp. I know it, we lost him at Roots because he was he started dealing with the with issues that. Kind of rock the, the the foundation of some old practices there that have uh, taken root. And once once he did that, and you know they went for him, they went, and eventually he left. So now he's also left for there. So other yeah, it's like those uh, uh, institutional developments. We're hoping. I mean, uh, I'm hoping that uh, this year. Will will give us at least some space, you know, to to uh, hey, to confront some of these things, man, and engage and look at them, uh, mm. try and address uh, so that okay. so that we, we don't have 
Yeah. Okay, well, we've been on for a while longer than I, I think we, sh we should. But let me ask, I have to ask you one more uh, related question yeah. in, in your field. I mean, for me, I know you're doing the academic you know, communication thing, but also, I mean, you are heavily involved in, in, in the arts. Let's just, just, just talk with music. What are, the, what are the artists, what are the music people doing around to sort of communicate stuff to, to, to I don't say to the masses, then I'll sound like something, but, you know, to, to, to the populace. In other words, you know, are, are we, uh, is, is, is it affecting the, the, music, the, the kind of music that's coming out? No, not the gatherings, but the, the kind, uh, how is this affecting the, the arts world is what I'm, what I'm asking. For one, for one, the, the, I think the, the, uh, there's now a shift to to a virtual kind of platform. So the artists have got to to use uh, virtual platforms. So again, you know, it's like kind of uh, how can I say? It's like accelerated or forced uh, people to come to terms with with uh, internet and connectivity and and online presence and and all of that and it's uh, it's hard to because you know with the older musicians they are there have been a lot of death of older musicians man it's sad it's like it's almost like the the the, the gods are, are are punishing us man you know all the all the wisdom that goes with Jonas Wang where it was the other day and and just after him a few days after him it was uh, Simone Gile Kumar who is a formidable, I mean, she comes from a family, her father was a professor of music at, uh, at the University of Zululand then, yeah. And so she, uh, we lost them, you know, just week, uh, weeks apart. And before that, we uh, had lost um, a few other musicians. I'm just trying to recall now. But we, basically, we, it's, been, it's been decimating on artists. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, uh, it, it's it's uh, we, we, we are yet to tell how what it what it uh, what impact it has had on on uh, just artists on the uh, generation of uh, new stories uh, new forms of uh, or genres or forms of. Uh, of uh, of expressions, yeah. Mm. So we we yet to tell. I mean, they say that, as they say, the jury is out on that, yeah. So mm -hmm. we uh, we're looking with interest, of course. I mean, I think mm. there is a, there is uh, some interesting possibilities, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, Sheppy, thank you for this. Uh, I'll try to let let yeah. me just just try to promise myself. I'm not going to promise you because then I'd be whatever. I'm going to promise yeah. myself that I'm going to try to contact you before the month is ended. Then we could talk about other things. So if you have any questions, yeah. just 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 let me know. Okay. We'll do. We'll do slow, man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll do. Hey, take mm. care, man. Okay. You be safe. Yeah. Okay. All, all my best to the family. Yeah, hug yeah, yeah. hug everybody for me. We'll do. All right, man. Yeah, I will, I will man. Yeah. Okay, uh, take care, man. All right. Later. Ciao. Ciao.